World's Weirdest Restaurants takes you to New York City for fine dining, where the servers keep you in the dark. Our guests wear blindfolds. The worst case scenario, no one's going to see me making a fool of myself. Then we'll travel to Tokyo for a meal that's a knockout. There's a boxing ring smack dab in the middle of this place. In San Francisco, we'll check out a funky comedy cafe where they keep the jokes clean. I love this place. I trust them to do my laundry. And back to Japan for homemade curry that's so tasty, it's off the track. Wow. <laughs> They say that the first taste is with the eyes. And you know, that may be true at most restaurants. But here, unless you want to starve, you'd better learn to trust your other senses. Dark dining is an amazing dining experience where our guests wear blindfolds. I can't see anything. How many fingers am I holding? 14. Dark dining combines performance and great food to create a dining experience the likes of which they'll never see. When you're blindfolded, the world becomes very three-dimensional. You get to spread out and feel it. It's an amazing sensory feast. I'm okay. totally jazzed for this. Who knows what's going to happen inside, but the worst case scenario, no one's going to see me making a fool of myself. Here we go. Here's the back of your chair, and here's the table. Oh, wow. It's a bit freaky. Dark dining is an experience of using your other senses. My eyes are wide open, but all I see is pitch blackness. Someone's going behind me here. It turns you into a much more three-dimensionally aware creature. I know where my mouth is, but how am I going to hit the food? I'm going to place a plate down in the middle of the table. The plate has one item on it. Find the plate, find the item, but don't eat it yet. Hold on to it. We're going to be doing a special thing together. OK? We're going to take our first bite simultaneously. If you listen, you can hear how ridiculously loud food can be. One, two, three, crunch. Oh, my god. Wow. That was amazing. I'm a choreographer, and I got interested in non-visual perception. And I decided it would be very interesting to have a dinner party where no one could see. So Dana approached me about possibly doing this concept of dark dining. Yes, sir. Down your first course. OK. Go slowly, tread lightly. I don't have the normal thing of when someone gets a plate and they eat with their eyes first, and I think, oh, that looks so good. So I have to entice them with smells and then textures and tastes. I have to think about my menu completely differently. Oh, oh, whoa. For diners, eating the meal becomes an adventure. Oh, wow, I, just, <laughs> I put my wine glass in my plate. They eat with my hands all the time. <laughs> eating with your hands is very nice. Not knowing what you're eating makes the food taste so intense and so bizarre. This is really cool, because for me, one of the challenges of being a, a foodie is that I love to taste things and to guess what they are. One of my favorite things is going to the dining room and hearing what people think that they're eating. I'm thinking broccoli, spinach. I think it's a yeah. yeah, I think you might be right. They do pretty well, but there are certain things that always trick people. I pride myself in being able to nail things, but I'm a bit confounded right now. <laughs> Wondering uh, what you think you're having for dinner. It's definitely not lamb. I think that this is some kind of braised brisket, pot roast, something like that. It's amazing. The room is so alive. The sense is good, much more sharp. It totally transformed the place that we're really familiar with into like a totally strange and different experience. I'm hearing all, everything now. And I was thinking that when you can't see the sound of something, that's the beauty that you appreciate even more. You heard so many things. You felt so many things. Both Sarah and I have a lot of training in touch and body language. We do a little bit of play with them throughout the night as well. We stop between a couple of the courses, and we do a short performance. That way, people have time to just be there. It's quite a sensation, sitting still and then all of a sudden feeling somebody's hands crawling across your body. But here, I guess, once you're blindfolded, you just sort of go with the flow. I don't know what it is. You just succumb and you put yourself in the hands, literally and figuratively, of the restaurant. Is there anything you need? Yes, I'm wondering if you could escort me to the loo. To the loo, of course I can.
Are we dancing? Life is a dance. <laughs> Put your hands on my shoulders. Here is the restroom. The light is on. You can take off your blindfold unless you would like the uh, added challenge. I love this. <laughs> it's okay. I know where it is. Thanks very much. Ah, smelling something that smells like apples. Yeah. There's definitely like an apple crumble or an apple crisp. That's something cold there. I mean, I guess this is ice cream. Whoops. So I have the fun job of telling you what you actually ate tonight. I had no idea what I was eating, but it was all amazing and delicious. Our first course was a spring pea and leek soup. Nobody in the room got that. The main course tonight was pork tenderloin. Oh my god. The texture of that really threw me. I could have sworn it was some kind of beef. It's amazing what happens when you can't see. Thank you so much for coming. Here we go. Wow. Holy smokes. <laughs> the light is so bright. Thank you so much. It was amazing. Oh, it was yeah. so good and so much fun. I mean, I don't even know where to start. But I think the biggest impression I had is that we walked in as like 75 individual people, and by the time we came out, it felt like we were one big happy family. <laughs> was that you was sitting it? beside me? I don't know. You think so? Yeah. Well, your voice sounds pretty familiar. Other than the food element of it, what was your other favorite part? I like the touching. <laughs> Definitely the touching. <laughs> Do you want to get a real sense of what the experience was like? Here, try this. We've all been to restaurants and seen people fight over the bill. But that's nothing like you'll find here at Tokyo's ONGI restaurant. Look at this. I thought I was just walking into a restaurant. But there's a full-size boxing ring smack dab in the middle of this place. Ringside seats. Hello! At ONGI, Muay Thai boxing fans can get all the excitement of a heavyweight bout while dining on knockout Thai cuisine right in the heart of Tokyo. I'm a former WK boxing champion, and now I run this Thai kickboxing restaurant. Does this happen in your own living room all the time? Uh, with the wife? Yeah. <laughs> Eat Thai food and Thai boxing. Out of the corner of my eye, I just saw this play go down on this table here. <laughs> it's grasshoppers. Fried grasshoppers. Hey, <laughs> Crunchy, kind of sweet. Can't stop at one. <laughs> Can you find this anywhere else in the world? No, not legally. <laughs> Arigato. Check this guy out. He looks like a Thai boxer, too. This is one restaurant I'm definitely not going to pick a fight with my waiter in. This is amazing. Classic Thai menu. Thai chicken wings, pad thai, coconut soup, curries. Is that green curry? Hey. Stir fries. I've just ordered way more than I can eat, but everything looks so good here that I couldn't resist. If any of the boxers land beside me, I can always share my food. No, no, looks like the no, fight's no. about to start. And there's the bell. My Pad Thai just arrived. I can smell the sweetness of this. Oh, that's such classic Pad Thai. A little sweet, a little spicy. This is amazing. We're upstairs in the training gym. The restaurant is right below us. So, I think you can teach me a few moves here. Okay. All right. Perhaps a helmet, a crash helmet. Uh, they're off. Basic punch, yeah, jab. Jab. Jab, okay. Okay. Jab like that. And smack in the middle of the restaurant is this kickboxing ring. It's unbelievable. One for, uh, yes. Okay, but this is my strong yes. arm. Really? <laughs> okay. I actually love eating at the restaurant at the same time watching the boxing. I can't believe it. These guys are fighting and all around me. People are just eating their dinner. I find this combination of food and fighting a little bit weird, but everybody's really enjoying it. He's nervous. Can you see the way he's sweating? Oh, oh, oh. This guy's being tenderized like a chicken cutlet. <laughs> I better run. See ya. Ah, uh, they got the Nice. Uh, beautiful shrimp. Cooked perfectly, too. Just wok fried very quickly, so it's still really juicy and succulent. Got some nice peppers here. Would you come back here just for the food? Definitely, I will. <laughs> I don't believe this. It's man versus woman in the ring. 
fresh veggies, nice green beans. Still got a beautiful crunch to them. This is cooked perfectly. Showtime! My money's on the woman! It's nicely done chicken thigh and a really beautiful Thai sauce. Good heat on this dish as well. Anybody who's ever sat at women's places in the kitchen obviously hasn't been to this Thai restaurant. Oh, you want me to go up there? It's just this crazy experience. How's the night going so far? Oh, it's excellent, isn't it? Yeah. I saw you working up an appetite. Where else in the world can eat such amazing pie food and be in proximity to a match like this? It's a one-two punch that just can't be beat. Laundromat can be a real chore. But here at San Francisco's Brainwash Cafe, they take the wash day experience, give it a refreshing new spin. The Brainwash Cafe is a wacky restaurant, also happens to be a laundromat. First opened in 1989, the Brainwash Cafe serves 2,000 meals a week and over 1,500 loads of laundry. It's a pretty funky cafe. You got your laundromat over here, your groovy clientele. Tonight we are having open mic comedy with Mr. Tony Sparks. I love this place. I trust them to do my laundry. And I never did that with any of my ex-wives. You can eat, you can have comedy. It's a lot you've done. This is going to be great. I think we should get the show underway. Uh, are y'all ready for some show, y'all, huh? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Good. So uh, what do you recommend? The burgers are pretty popular, uh -huh. the flat iron chicken sandwich, and the fish tacos. They got some pretty good food, not too expensive. Not too many places where you can get good fish tacos, do your laundry, and do a comedy show. Well, I'll show you guys do it. Well, I'll have the flat iron chicken sandwich, but I think I would like to have onion rings with that. If you're doing laundry, you get a free pint of beer. I can't believe that I'm doing this here at a laundromat, but I'm going to order a beer. Space aliens! Come on. Right here, you seamlessly walk through the threshold into the laundry room. Not a lot of people have laundry in their house, and everyone is used to sharing space, even though you are kind of doing something private, like maybe, you know, folding your underwear. So are there rules? Do you have to do your laundry there and eat here, or no? No, of course not. Of no, course San not. Francisco, no rules in San Francisco. Oh, no. I wish every restaurant I was going to had laundry. Makes this touring a lot easier. So you're regular here? Yeah, I come about every two weeks. What's your favorite thing to eat here? I love the burger of doom and the flat iron chicken sandwich are my two favorites. Oh yeah? The sandwich has like some type of special sauce. Like a tangy, sweet type of Italian dressing. It's really, really good. So what'd you order? The burger of doom. The burger of doom, yeah, you gotta love that. This is a shrimp and chicken salad with red peppers. It's okay. delicious. There are a lot of characters. The staff is so friendly. It sort of embodies the spirit of San Francisco. I feel like I'm the manager of a community space that provides a lot of different services to a lot of different people. And just think about it. You spill your beer on your clothes, you can come back here and do your lunch, And right? you can do your set naked. Uh, no, you don't want to do that. They came back and they brought pictures. It's the gritty, grungy underbelly of San Francisco comedy. How many comics do you get a we night? We average about 30 to 40 a night here. Wait, so this is like the comedy equivalent of speed dating? Exactly. You doing your laundry? No, I'm here for stand-up comedy. Oh, you one of the comics? I am. Fantastic. You didn't bring your laundry while you were here? No, I have a washer oh, in my house. Oh, you're a successful stand-up comedian. I, no, I am certainly not. It's the only place I've seen where you're going to have any walk of life come in, live their regular life, and you have people chasing their dreams on stage here at the same time. So no matter if you're a they're turkeys anyway. Woo! Yeah, this place really is the Mardi Gras laundromat. So I have a flat iron chicken sandwich for Bob. Oh, sweet. Oh, man, this looks great. Grilled chicken, pesto, tomato, beautiful salad with microgreens. How's it tasting? Delicious. This should help it taste oh, better, Ethan. You keep coming here for the food? I come here for the atmosphere. I come here every Thursday night to do comedy, eat good food, and I love eating their burgers. And people play pinball, they check their email. Man, I can't believe it's all under one roof. Most places, when they add too many elements, it tends to water it down into mediocrity. But with Brainwash, everything works. Do the ladies like a guy who knows how to fold his own laundry? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been asked out on a date here? Yeah, two times. Really? It's like one-stop shopping. Ah, clean clothes. 
I love this. The machines all have names on them, so you remember which one's yours. What's the difference between running a comedy stage at a laundromat and running a comedy stage at a comedy club? Here, the audience is constantly moving. They're coming in and out. So you have to be very funny and very engaging to keep their attention. By a round of applause, who here's had a one-night stand? Uh, OK, gross. Jenny. You know, this really is my laundry. So what is that je ne sais quoi that just like makes this whole thing kind of work? It's always been a very special magical energy. I think the owner was smart to put all these things together. I've been to restaurants that are crazy weird. This is just like really cool weird. It seems like this is the neighborhood clubhouse. Bob, write some material next time. All right, Bill. But you know there's that crazy restaurant on Mars. They've got great food, but no atmosphere. No atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, you have to purchase a ticket to get inside Tokyo's Curry Station Niagara. But once you're inside, the only thing leaving the station is the train. So this is pretty typical outside of many Japanese restaurants. You actually order the food, get your ticket, and then go inside. But in this case, the ticket I have doubles as my train ticket, which is actually so perfect. Let's see what I ordered. Oh, Station Niagara is the only place where train food means your food is delivered by a train. Why you ask? Because as the owner's mother once told him, before you swallow, you must chew chew. Okay. When I was a child, I would go to the train station and watch the trains and think about how cool the conductor was. Oh, I get to order my heat level. So for children, no, that's not me. Mild taste for adults. Good for those who like extremely hot curry. Uh, hey, station master. Station master. Station master for me. Ah, station master. <laughs> My mom used to make curry for me during the war with the only ingredients we could find. Curry and rice. We consider them as Jap part of Japanese food. Originally from India, as everyone knows, it tastes a little different because they mix different ingredients in history so that the Japanese people like it. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe this. Never had my lunch delivered to me by a train before. This glass is on an angle as though it were on a rocking train. Gotta try this curry. Well, that spice is very aggressive. It's all over my mouth in the first taste. Often spices take a little while to sink in. Ooh. Let's check out this cutlet. It appears to be breaded and deep fried. Oh, that's nice. Super fresh, crispy, crunchy. Pork's very, very tender. You know, I'm trying to figure this stuff out. They're, they look like pickled vegetables. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to put some of these on the curry. That's like a sweet pickled onion. Oh, definitely ginger. A little curry, a little rice, a bit of the pickle. I get it, that really goes nicely together because the sweetness of the pickle tempers the heat in the curry. What do you think of the restaurant? It's fantastic. I think this is a um, very old restaurant. You don't have to look any further than this table to find evidence of the fact that this is a classic family-run operation. We have father, mother, brother, daughter-in-law, and grandchild. Three generations running this place. Everything appears to be authentic and so worn. I mean, this kind of stuff is probably 50 or 75 years old. He's showing me that the entire interior is all wood from the trains. That's amazing. This is a collection of plates. Wow, that is solid brass. Oh, those are from the back of the train. Look at this, actual door from the train. You know, so many restaurants have uh, photographs and autographs of celebrities. Well, here, they have the autographs of station masters, because in his world, the station masters are the true celebrities. Hi. And this is the best part of a whole restaurant. Here is where the train comes out, pulling the food that you order. So he's taking it, he's squeezing in this tiny little galley, and he's putting it on the back of the train. He's got these six buttons. Whichever button he pushes is the table that the food arrives at. I was watching you, and, and you were just as excited as the kids over here when the train arrived. Sure, because we didn't expect a restaurant like this exists. Mr. Naito's preparing a curry here. He's making this from scratch, too. He's got the vegetables, onions, uh, this curry paste, and he's putting it all together in this wok. Look at the way he does that. It's so beautiful. Just passes that, just with a little flip of his wrist. And look at the smile on his face. I don't care where you are, what restaurant you are in the world, 
You can't find that kind of love. This is amazing, not even on the menu. This is like something special he's making. Oh, it's delicious. So many flavors going on there with that curry paste. Who's the lucky boy? Mr. Naito, how old are you? Uh, 76. 76 years old and still working every single day. My favorite thing is seeing the expressions on kids' faces. My son likes late weights. I like this restaurant very much. You just can't help but pull the whistle once you got one of these caps on. Curry Station Niagara combines one man's passion for trains and curry, all under one roof. Hashimoto!